Hey everybody, it is Chris, post-debate edition. I've got the shirt unbuttoned, I'm sweaty. It's, watching those debates is like a uh, 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 full, full contact sport for me. Okay, I got my notebook out. Look, let me get the big news out of the way. Kamala Harris won the debate uh, tonight over Donald Trump. It wasn't particularly close. I'm gonna explain to you why. Okay, um, number one, Trump lost his cool. Never a good thing to be emotional in a public forum when you're a politician, particularly when 50 million people are watching and many people have, many of those people have questions about your te overall temperament and your ability to do the job and deal with foreign leaders. How did she make him lose his cool? The most basic and obvious way possible. She trolled him on his insecurities. So very early in the debate, the debate, Harris was asked about immigration, which should be a weakness for her, right? Uh, people trust Trump much more than Biden and Harris on immigration. She she gave kind of a eh, answer, and then she pivoted randomly because it wasn't even in the question at all, and started saying, "You know what? I want everyone to go to a Donald Trump debate because you see, he's got small crowd sizes and people leave all the time." Totally random, totally out of nowhere, and he took the debate absolutely obsessed with crowd size to fess people don't leave i have the biggest crowds ever and from there on which was about 15 minutes into the debate he veered off and he never really if i'm being honest got back on okay what else did she troll him on and by the way it was clearly a strategic move by harris she was absolutely 100 percent trying to piss him off and trying to get him get under his skin and it absolutely worked she uh, so crowd size i mentioned Personal wealth. She talked about how he inherited $400 million. He, of course, felt the need to litigate that. Why? I don't know. Um, she called him weak. She said uh, business leaders and world leaders were, quote unquote, laughing at him. She said he was a, quote unquote, dis people were saying he was a disgrace. He hates all those words. She mocked him about his references to Hannibal Lecter over and over and over again. And he just went down the road. The, that road led him to the people are eating pets in Springfield, Ohio. Okay, so that's point one, how she won. Point two, how she won. Trump played a huge amount of defense. I mean a huge amount of defense. So it, politics is about accentuating the things that you want to talk about and de-accentuating, if that's a word, the things you don't. Trump going in this debate wants to talk about immigration and the economy almost exclusively. Harris wants to talk about abortion, abortion, abortion. On abortion, he went on and on. He's losing anytime he's talking about abortion, just FYI, because he appointed the justices who overturned Roe v. Wade, and 60% of people do not think Roe v. Wade should have been overturned, and women voters especially are in that group. So it goes on and on, and then he goes back into it to talk about IVF and fertilization. No, walk away, you are not winning that debate. Okay, he's on defense there. He's on defense about January 6th and his role at that rally. He's on defense about the 2020 election. He's on defense about Project 2025. Now, contrast that with where Harris played defense. She was on defense a little bit about immigration. She was on defense a little bit about her policy flip-flops. But by and large, that stuff was not really in the debate. And Donald Trump did not litigate it. At the end of the debate, he said, you've had three and a half years to fix this and you haven't done anything. Why was that not in the beginning, in the middle, and the end of the debate? Why would you put that at 10.45 p.m. Eastern time and say it one time? Makes no sense. Okay, uh, last thing. Trump sounded way too much like a, his campaign rally. So look, good politicians know how to modulate their message depending on the audience. And the audience at a campaign rally is your base, right? They're there, they've turned out, they wanna hear all the red meat, they wanna hear Hannibal Lecter, and they wanna hear uh, communist, and they wanna hear, you know, they're ruining the country, and they wanna hear Joe Biden took millions from the mayor of Moscow's wife, didn't happen. But they wanna hear all that stuff. In a debate where 46% of people are pretty much locked in, and you've got 8% of people who are gonna make the decision, uh, who are undecided, you got to modulate that message. They don't want to hear all that stuff. They want to hear what are you going to do for them on the economy? What are you going to do for their lives? What are you going to do to bring the country together? Harris repeatedly said, we want your vote. Uh, it, there's a home for you here. She talked about positivity. She talked about optimism. She talked about all those messages. He didn't talk about any of that stuff. It was like he was talking to a campaign rally. And that is the exact wrong tone and message for a debate in which a small number of swing voters are going to make uh, make or break the election. So those are the reasons I think Harris won. Again, to me, it wasn't particularly close. Um, how much of a difference will it make? 
I don't know is the short answer. Remember, Hillary Clinton was broadly seen as having won the 2016 debates, and obviously Donald Trump won the election. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, I think a lot of people are locked in, and they either didn't watch the debate or they already knew who they thought won before they they even tuned in. Um, but look, for the night, Harris won, and won going away. All right, that's all I got. Everybody, uh, four things. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already. Like this video, comment on this video, tell 10 friends about this channel. Thanks and take care.